Hello everyone, it's Kelly here from Spiritual Awakening Signs. I'm so excited because today we are doing our live masterclass all about how to heal your genetic wounds, how to free your spirit from family issues and calm your awakening experience. It will calm your life too, that's for sure. Uh, and I can't wait to get into this stuff. Genetic wound healing is absolutely fascinating it is the coolest aspect of the entire awakening process and I'm going to show you why today you're going to absolutely love it uh, this type of material is not covered anywhere else and I don't know why because it's so important to the awakening process but we're really going to get into some serious uh, movement towards healing and some big shifts so today in this class we're going to be covering why your spiritual awakening and life is more disrupted right now or why it's disrupted in the first place uh, and how to calm it ASAP. We're going to cover how genetic wound healing can de-stress your life. I can testify to that. Uh, it signs genetic wounds are affecting your awakening. What you know? How does it show up in your life so that you'll know for sure whether gen uh, genetic wound healing is something that you need? Uh, three big mistakes to avoid when healing your energetic genetics. Three simple steps to powerful genetic wound healing, which of course we need. Uh, and of course, we'll be doing some live intuitive readings to identify your family's genetic wound uh, for some lucky viewers uh, it could be you so do stay on live and I'll be selecting a few people at the end and we'll be reading you and telling you what your genetic wound is it's really really cool so I'll say a few hellos I can see lots of people have joined us already hello hello please tell me who you are and where you're from so we've got Mary hi there we've got Kelly another Kelly hi we've got Nada uh, from Springfield, we've got Dove, I hope I'm saying that correctly, hello there, we've got Keely, uh, she managed to make it live, I'm so glad you could, we've got Anne from Greenland, hello, we've got Jackson from Toronto, we're having a busy video today, so of course if you're joining us uh, now, please do say hello, tell us who you are and where you're from, and uh, everyone can enjoy this genetic wound healing that we're doing, hi to Maria, and Kate as well, all the way from South Africa. Fantastic, guys. So we really need to get into this pronto because I know that awakening is a bit crazy right now. And there are reasons for that, which I'm going to go into in the video. So don't worry, we're going to make sure you know everything that you need to know, uh, particularly around this issue. But what I can tell you is that we do uh, energetic updates on what's going on in spiritual awakening and how things are changing. And this is your update for now. The update that you need to know is that your genetic wounds have been activated. Now I'm going to break down exactly what that means, but that's what we're seeing. That's the information I'm getting. Genetic wounds are being activated right now. So that means that a lot of the drama, the disorder, the dysfunction, all that kind of wounding that exists in your family, so it isn't even yours, is rising to the surface to be cleared right now. Um, it's playing out in a really big way and I'm going to break down exactly what that's really all about because it is a bit crazy and it's tough to manage but because we're shifting into higher vibration en masse, it's happening all over the world, it's a global shift, we are raising our vibration, that is starting to bring all the negative energy that is stopping our ascension, it's bringing it all to the surface and the purge that's happening right now is genetic so energetically our genetics are being cleared and everything's being risen to the surface so really to keep it dead simple what is a genetic wound okay let's make it as basic as possible because nobody ever covers this stuff it's just your family's baggage now unfortunately that means on both sides your mother and your father but it's your family's baggage we incarnate into a family line and we automatically absorb all of their issues, all of their energetic genetic patterning. So that means we take on all of their energetic and emotional baggage. So all the emotion, all the negative beliefs, all the uh, negative personality traits and characteristics that we don't want, and even trauma. We can carry trauma that isn't even ours. It belonged to an ancestor hundreds of thousands of years ago. We're still carrying that today. So it really is huge. And one thing that I want you to take away from this today is that genetic wounds are the number one cause of life disruption and awakening. They are the thing that tend to cause uh, all the drama, all the dysfunction, all the problems, all the conflict. It's that that makes it show up in your external life. So if you're noticing that suddenly things have become a lot worse since your awakening began, which is really common, it's usually because all that genetic kind of 
muck has come into the surface and it's looking to be healed and it starts playing out in your daily life which just makes it hell it just makes it so difficult but don't worry we're going to cover how to get through all of that uh, today but what I do want you to know is that unfortunately light workers like us those of us who are going through the awakening pathway we often choose to incarnate into families who are really difficult they're really messy they're really conflict and drama prone uh, and usually it's because we know that we can make a difference on the soul level we know that we can incarnate into that family and into that genetic line and we can make a difference we can heal their wounds for good and that doesn't just heal us because we get the benefit of the healing when we're in that it heals it for all future family members of that family as well it changes the the kind of energetic dna that we're passing down on and on and on because that information becomes like a map of the world it's the the information that gets passed on that really should be all the wisdom and all the learning but it gets mixed in with all the trauma and the upset and the faulty belief systems and the negative life experiences that's why you tend to find quite often that people uh, experience something that happened to a grandparent or the mum and dad or someone a lot further up the line you know a similar career or divorce or bankruptcy or something along those lines repeats again it's because you're living out the genetic pattern and you've taken on the map and it becomes your point of attraction so if you can imagine how, how messed up one person can be you know how tough it is to make your way through life think how messed up one person can be now imagine having to process the messed upness of all the ancestors before you it's just insane it's not you just can't even make sense of it in your mind now the good thing is we can clear so much of this it's not as difficult as you think and I'm going to cover all that but it's really important that you know that we do incarnate into families that are really messy and unfortunately that means that quite often we end up in families where we feel like we don't belong or that we don't really fit in and we don't we just don't understand the way they function sometimes it's like you know there's specific family traits or issues or ways that they behave and we're just like I just don't get I just don't get it and it's because it's not really true to who we are we've incarnated into it and we're spotting it because we're going to heal it and I've also got a story about that, that I'm going to share a little bit later on as well um, but unfortunately we're sensitive we can get hurt by that in the process we can be sometimes even traumatized by it it can affect our childhood and the interactions that we have later in life with our families as well it just doesn't make sense to us so uh, what I'm finding and this is what I've found through years and years of uh, sessions with people is that people like us who are going through spiritual awakening and who are um, light workers really we have uh, made promises before we got down here so what I'm finding is that we have vowed to heal our genetic family line we have made a promise on the soul level that we are going to come down we're going to integrate into a real messy messy family with loads of issues and problems that we're going to have to solve and we get a little bit beaten by them as well uh, by all these issues and then of course we have to move our way through it but it is a vow that I'm finding person after person we promise to heal the family line and that's us being a light worker and bringing something to the earth to shift the earth globally so uh, it makes it really difficult but we can definitely move through it so don't worry okay uh, but one of the problems that it does bring up when we pick up on all this energetic genetic pattern and when we take on that blueprint that comes from our family it makes awakening hell it makes it so difficult and the key thing that I want you to take away from here is that you'll be working through a lot of stuff in your awakening and in your life that make things really really difficult and they're not even yours like I said before they are things that came from ancestors they're things that came from people way further back in the chain that's just got passed down and passed down instead of wisdom we've also got it mixed in with all the emotional upset and all the confusion and all the faulty beliefs that ancestors have picked up and it's not doing us any favors it's keeping us limited it's keeping us small and it's also affecting our point of attraction so we're attracting all the same negative stuff into our lives because it's got to be healed and that's the thing that happens in awakening it starts showing up in your daily life it starts causing problems it starts causing conflict and it really creates big problems it makes it really difficult it can make it really upsetting and it's the one thing that I think makes awakening feel like not only are you completely exhausted but you start wondering like I don't know if I'm going to make it through this I don't know if I can do the whole awakening thing I don't know if it even is awakening maybe I've just lost my mind 
that's what genetic uh, wounds do to you. It's just, it's quite overwhelming. So we're going to get into really what you need to do to move into uh, really becoming free of all of that, being true to who you authentically are without the programming that's been put in place and uh, moving into health, happiness and the harmony of awakening, all the joys that awakening can bring because this little healing part is only supposed to take a little bit of time. It's not supposed to be the whole thing. We want to move into the better things. And also what I want you to know is that we have a huge opportunity right now to skip the most difficult parts. Now I was telling you earlier about how the globally we are shifting, we're raising our vibration and things are happening on a really big scale. The vibration that we live in daily has suddenly risen, it's really heightened and it's given us a really short term window where we can clear and heal these genetic wounds at warp speed at an accelerated rate. That's the option that it gives us right now. So we can dissolve a lot of the chaos, a lot of the drama, a lot of the challenge that would play out in our lives if we didn't catch it first, because that's what happens in awakening. Um, so we really have this chance to heal ourselves and our families and that genetic template at an accelerated rate. So take the opportunity to skip forward a level through all the upset and through all the drama while you have it. Use the heightened energies that are here right now so that we can move through because what that really allows us to do is what we call theme healing. So instead of having to clear, you know, maybe a hundred different people with the same issue throughout your genetic line, you only need to heal one. You heal the person where it began, you heal the root of the issue, the first person that experienced that and all the rest of the stuff in between just dissolves right down to you clears it from your space and your energy as well. So phenomenal opportunity to heal right now. You're going to be able to heal faster than you've ever healed before. I can definitely say that. So use the heightened energies to move forward to skip the difficult part and get into the better stuff in awakening because you could be here for years cycling around in this stuff and that's usually what we get faced with but not right now. So move forward, okay? So what I do want you to know about that is that if you don't Okay, if you don't start clearing now, what you're going to find is that a lot of that drama and dysfunction is going to play out in your life. So it starts becoming a reality. It starts playing out in your interactions with your family, in your interactions with your friends, your colleagues, your you know the people you work with, uh, people you meet when you go out to buy things, when you go to shops. When you, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. The universe will find a way to weave it into your life and you'll get faced with the same difficulties that your ancestors did because it's searching to be healed. Now the great thing about this is because of the heightened energies right now and because we can do that technique of theme healing, we can skip forward through all that. So we can get to heal it before it starts to play out in our lives. And that includes even if it's already been doing that, even if it's already been playing out in your life, it's okay. You can start healing it now and start clearing it and start making it a bit easier to move forward uh, and get through a lot of it right now. So it's a really exciting time for healing. It is the fastest we've ever been able to shift things ever. So please take the opportunity rather than cycling around and letting the universe play it out in your real life, totally stressing you out, totally exhausting you because that can take years and we don't want that. So let's uh, let's focus on moving forward but the great thing is there are some awesome benefits to genetic wound healing um, some of the exciting shifts that you can get are things like being able to be truly authentic authentically you uh, without being obligated to be like your family because that that kind of is programmed into us we don't even realize it you know people get a little bit older and they go oh my god i'm just like my mum or i'm just like my dad these things are programmed into us so you can you can be truly who you are as a soul without having to be obligated to be like them to pick up any of those negative traits. It's also going to allow you to release negative personality traits. Now you'll know there are certain things about your mom or your dad or family other family members that really get on your nerves, things that you really just cannot stand back and watch or things that you really, you know, it, it kind of offends you deeply. Uh, that's the light worker way. <laughs> because uh, we care so much about harmony, but things that really offend you, you're going to be able to release those from your energy system so that you're not just um, having to battle them all the time to ensure you don't become that way. It's just, let's just clear it out so that it's not there. Uh, you're also going to have less conflict, drama or upset in your family interactions, which is really, really important. If you can clear that energy, it can make a big difference. And sometimes you just see a change in someone. It's the most incredible thing. You just it's like, oh my God, they're acting different. I don't know why. It's because you've healed the pattern. 
Uh, you can also heal trauma in your family line, any of your ancestors that have experienced trauma as well. You can experience, uh, you, can, you can send healing to your ancestors, which is really cool, being able to send healing through time to the ancestors and the people in your uh, generational line who have been wounded, who need your help, uh, who are still facing these issues. They haven't moved on yet, so we can heal that. It's really cool. I've got a story to share with you about that. Um, and you can uh, stop negative family themes uh, from repeating. So like I said before, things like divorce, abuse, bankruptcy, things that you notice, it's like, oh, that's really strange. That happened to my grandparent and it also happened to my mum or, you know, something along those lines. Something happened to, you know, a great grandparent, maybe your parent and you. And it's like, that's really strange that, that always happens in our family. No, it's a pattern and it needs to be cleared out. So don't let it manifest in your life. Like I said, if it already has, you can still clear it, but you, you want to move past this stuff. Uh, you can also change your point of attraction. So being able to clear these things from your space means that you're going to be not only authentically you, but you've got all that trauma and damage out of your energy field, which means you can attract healthier things into your life. When you're still carrying all your family's genetic baggage, you tend to attract things that, that resonate with the baggage. And unfortunately, all that baggage is negative stuff. So you're just going to attract more of the same. Uh, and it can make life a lot more difficult. Get it cleared out. Uh, and you'll also experience a calmer uh, awakening and life experience. That's the, just the most important thing about it. It's great to heal yourself. It's great to heal your family. But if you've been struggling with awakening and you're finding it difficult to keep your head above water, genetic healing is really the thing that can just kind of clear the space a little bit because then you're only dealing with what's actually yours rather than having to deal with all this family stuff as well. It's just, it's too much. Um, it can seriously de-stress your life and your awakening so it's very very powerful I don't know why people don't cover it more often it's vital absolutely vital um, but of course this recent surge in genetic wounds rising up to the surface has been causing some problems so I'm really interested to know you guys have you noticed this in your life have you noticed these things playing out I'm going to give you a list um, of signs that genetic wounds are activated in your life and are affecting your awakening, right? And let me know if you resonate with any of these um, because genetic wounds rising to the surface can cause a lot of disturbance in our lives. It can cause problems like life trauma. It can cause uh, negative or faulty beliefs about life, uh, dysfunctional behavioral patterns within yourself or in interactions with others, devastating life challenges, like I said before, uh, ill health, uh, divorce, um, you know, uh, emotional trauma, unhealthy ways of relating to or treating others, sometimes you don't even mean to and it just comes out and it's like, what is that? That's just, it's just totally like my, my family member or my parent. Um, negative personality traits, they show up all the time. It's very, very upsetting for light workers like us because it doesn't feel true to who we are because it's not. But things like narcissism, low self-esteem, uh, selfishness, patterns of denial, things like that can show up. And of course, conflict, conflict in your life everywhere. And it's like, why is it even when I hide, I can't get away from this stuff? And I know because I did that, like I really hid for months and months and months in the hopes that I could escape this stuff. The universe just won't let you do that. Um, also things like uh, emotional pain. So you might find that you're more emotional than usual. There's things coming up that you're like, I don't, why is that coming up now? I don't really know where that comes from. That doesn't really feel like mine but it's really, really upsetting to you. So these are all signs that genetic wounds are activated and playing out in your life. So do let me know below if you resonate with any of those and if you think that they're playing out right now, because I'll bet that for most of us going through awakening, they will be. It's, uh, it's really intense. But if we want our awakenings to stop causing havoc and drama in our lives, we're going to need to heal the source of the problem. We need to go to the root of the problem and the root of that problem is all the baggage that's been collected through, throughout our entire family's history. Awakening does not need to be hell. And I'll say it again. Awakening does not need to be hell. Uh, life doesn't need to be so chaotic. So please know that if you're having a really difficult time, you can heal your energetic genetics and yourself in the process, which is really cool. Uh, and clear the way for all the ascended joys that, that life can bring, that awakening can bring, all the good stuff that you're supposed to get to. You're not supposed to be in this tortured state for the entirety of your awakening. You're not supposed to be struggling to 
you know, get to the next step completely exhausted or trying to keep your head above water. That's just not the way it's supposed to be. So you want to clear this stuff out so you can just take a deep breath and be like, okay, now I know what's mine. I can work on that. Um, get, get the rest of the stuff out of the way and you can do that. A good example of that would be uh, Kate's story. So I'd love to share with you this experience I had uh, working with Kate. <clears throat> so a common theme that was coming up when I was working with Kate in one-to-one sessions was narcissism. Now, it had always been a large part of her upbringing and, of course, her damage because it, it, she'd experienced it at such a young age. Um, but it started showing up as her awakening began everywhere. It started showing up you know, with uh, family, where it originated, of course, Uh, started showing up in friendships and relationships, and it even showed up with uh, work colleagues. It was really, really bizarre. Now, because it had been such a big part of her uh, upbringing and her childhood, she was hyper vigilant about narcissistic tendencies. She was very much like, I do not want to be like my parents. I do not want to be a narcissist. So she was really really hyper vigilant about that really cautious and really careful about the way she interacted with other people knowing that it had been such a big part of her childhood and actually it made her a really skilled narcissism detector she could spot this stuff so far away it was incredible but the problem was that it wasn't just happening in her family anymore now that awakening had amped up it was starting to happen everywhere around her no matter where she went it was really really strange for her she couldn't understand this and I was like it's not as strange as you think it does happen in awakening a lot but it showed up wherever she went in fact she even changed jobs three times over the space of time that we were doing the sessions together on this and every single place that she went not only had a narcissistic boss but had really manipulative uh, co-workers that would cause a lot of bullying that would bully her And of course, it was really exhausting. It was really exasperating and really, really upsetting for us. We were doing sessions, talking about this in sessions quite often. So we decided to dig a bit deeper. And I intuitively read her energetic genetics, just like I'm about to do at the end when we pick a few uh, lucky people. I tuned in and read her energetic genetics to see where this problem had really begun. Where was the ancient ancestor uh, where this narcissism had started? And we connected to the soul of a very, very ancient ancestor. This was an old, old thing in her family's past. He was a really strong young young man, full of narcissism and superiority. He had a very big ego. You know, his attitude was just uh, really, really difficult to work with. And as we tuned into him and started working with him, we realised that he was very cold. It was completely void of emotion and it made him really, really selfish. It made him really inconsiderate and sometimes quite nasty. He had this real sense of superiority about him. So when we noticed that he had no empathy and no feeling, we decided to look a bit deeper, look into his wounds and see what was really going on there. And we found that he had been abandoned as a child. He'd been abandoned as a baby, um, unwanted. And he'd been really neglected as a young child as well. And it was these wounds of low self-esteem and low self-worth from feeling like nothing that had really created this egotistical drive to absolutely have to be the best. He had to be the best. But it also shut down his emotion. So his system was trying to make sure that he'd shut down all the emotions so that he couldn't feel the pain of those childhood wounds. He couldn't feel the pain of the rejection that was going to be there. And uh, it gave us a bit of understanding. It made us realise why he was so inconsiderate and selfish towards others. Um, it's because he was trying to kind of hide the pain from, from his awareness. He was trying to block it all out and just be like, oh, I'm, I'm amazing, here I am kind of thing. I won't feel the pain. But it wasn't working. And so we, um, we started to do some uh, healing on him because he couldn't feel, he couldn't seem to feel or connect into emotions. He had no emotional empathy whatsoever. And Kate immediately was like, this is where this narcissism has started. And as I was telling her some of these different traits that this ancient ancestor had, she was like, yeah, that's like my family. That's like my family. Oh my God, that's like my family. And we were just getting all these aha moments. It was absolutely incredible to get this insight into something from so long ago. Well, we couldn't believe how many moments we were having like that. It was really cool. And she could relate to so many of the similarities within her family. 
So we started to really show this man and this ancestor compassion. We started to give him the love and care that his childhood had been absolutely devoid of. And when we did, his, his attitude kind of softened a little bit. When we cared, he cried. He started to get really emotional and his, his ability to feel started to return. It was an incredible thing to watch. And it was really quite beautiful to see this proud man, this really proud, strong, you know, image of a man actually crumbled and you just saw this this inner child, this really wounded inner child within uh, that was just in pain. It was just an absolute pain. So we realised that it was all those patterns that were causing the same problem and they were self-perpetuating. So every time someone else became a narcissist or had those narcissistic tendencies, they neglected the next child and the next child grew up to be have to have narcissistic traits and it was like ah bingo this is where this all starts so doing the healing work and clearing that aspect for Kate really created some amazing shifts we were both like high-fiving each other it was so cool um she became a lot less triggered around uh narcissistic tendencies so she really calmed down massively around that she was able to set healthier boundaries uh with even with a uh, family, you know, with other narcissistic people. And best of all, the intensity of the narcissism that was showing up in her life, in her relationships, in her friendships, and in her work just dissipated. It massively changed. Um, and of course, we can't eradicate those characteristics from everyone. But with the frequency with which it was showing up, we were able to reduce massively. Uh, and it made awakening so much easier for her to handle. With the narcissism thing out of the way, she was like, okay now I can breathe type thing um it was absolutely incredible so it really it really changed the way that she was feeling but it didn't only affect her life and awakening uh really there and then but it, it's also going to impact her future generations it's about positively impacting her family and that energetic template being changed and being healed so that anything that she passes on from here on now is just healthy it's not full of all that narcissism it's not full of abuse and trauma um absolutely incredible and, and like i said you can see i'm really passionate about it it's just so cool it's just really really cool that you can do that in awakening um so that's how to do it right but let's talk about some uh, mistakes to avoid when you're healing your energetic genetics because there are some things that I see playing out and I've been doing genetic uh, level wound healing for a really really long time so I can see these things and the things that we're missing so I'm going to cover some of them so that you can avoid them in your own healing journey okay I can see a few people are resonating with the narcissism stuff it's like yep that's in my family or yeah that's been coming up um, but yeah it's there's probably a reason why I've shared that so let's talk about mistakes that you need to avoid when you're healing your energetic genetics, okay? So mistake number one that I see happening all the time is no genetic healing at all. So I mentioned before, people don't cover this topic. They really don't. I don't know why. I don't know if people think it's boring. It's absolutely fascinating to me. But it's, you know, spiritual awakening is so full of the spiritual stuff that quite often the genetic healing isn't practiced and yet the genetic healing like the story I've just told is so spiritual you know you're tuning into ancient ancestors I don't know what could be more spiritual than that but it does us a terrible disservice when it's avoided and it's exactly the reason why your life can seem to fall apart when you move into awakening it suddenly becomes more difficult more problem prone uh, when ascension begins and that's why so you need to remember genetic wounding is the number one cause of life disruption during awakening. It is the reason why everything starts to fall apart. And it's the one aspect of uh, it's the one aspect that tends to cause the most real life problems. Um, and the sad thing is that if only we would address that, if only we would heal that and start to shift that, if we did it properly, we would really see a huge difference to the peace and equilibrium of our lives and our awakening. We would feel completely differently about it all and we would be healing our ancestors in the process. So it's really cool. So mistake number one is no genetic healing at all. You need genetic healing if you want to move forward in the awakening pathway. The genetics need to be healed on some level. Uh, so don't let it play out in the physical. Get it healed first. Mistake number two is not healing the right person. Now let me break that down a little bit. Most genetic healing only addresses either your mother or your father. They don't even often focus on both, but it's usually only the mother or father. But I find that to be almost entirely useless 
because unless we can heal the specific ancestor of where the problem originated, whoever it is that sustained the trauma themselves, uh, working with mum or dad just leads you to have to work with their mum and dad, then you need to work on their mum and dad, and it's like, you know, you're just going like one step, one step, one step, and you'll never really get to the end of it. It could be someone hundreds of years in the past. So what you really need to do, it's much quicker and more effective if you just work Send healing to the person who sustained the emotional injury first. Free them first um, and then you'll free yourself. You'll find that all of the ancestors in between get healing when you work that way. So rather than working one, one and then one, just go right back to the one where it started and everything in between dissolves. It's really cool. <laughs> it's the fastest healing you can get. It's, it's super awesome. Uh, mistake number three kind of leads on from what I just said. Mistake number three is not healing your ancestors first. Okay, you have to heal your ancestors first. Um, it's another huge mistake that I see when people trying to heal themselves without healing their ancestors first. It absolutely, unequivocally must come first because the trauma that holds trauma holds genetic wounds in place. So if you're trying to pull genetic wounds, but there's all this trauma from some other ancestor further back, you're not going to be able to set it free. You're not going to be able to unlock it because the trauma kind of like really holds it, really grips it in place uh, because it's survival and it's getting passed on like a map from person to person to ensure their survival. So what you really need to do is remove it from its point of creation. And like I said, the awesome thing about that is when you heal the ancestor first, when you, when you go back to the right point and you heal the ancestor first, quite often the issue disappears automatically from your energy entirely, it just disappears from uh, my client's system automatically as a result with no additional healing required it's just so cool um so don't make any of those mistakes and i'll be kind of going over them again just a little bit towards the end but let's talk about our three-step process to heal your soul and calm your life through genetic wound healing okay of course it's going to calm your awakening as well which we all need it's not as complicated as it sounds I'm going to break it down with our three-step process and of course if you guys have any questions you just let me know and I'll answer them all at the end after our intuitive readings which are coming just soon. So uh, let's get into how to heal your soul and calm your life through genetic wound healing. Step one, like I said before, heal your ancestors, release their trauma first. You have to go to the ancestors. There's no use working on this stuff here because it didn't originate in you. It comes from a really long time ago and it's been passed down the ancestors first step two release the negative energy from your cells okay and step three i'm going to break all this down guys step three is replace with a healthy energetic blueprint instead okay so the key that's always missing in genetic healing is healing the ancestors first usually people start picking at the person they've got in front of them you need to go back you need to go to where it started and you can't truly get rid of faulty programming without clearing the trauma that actually created the faulty programming in the first place. And you need to remember that your ancestors are traumatized. The, the information that's been filtered down has come from traumatized individuals, traumatized ancestors. And every unhealthy uh, behavioral pattern and negative characteristic uh, that exists in your family exists out of an adaption to a very painful or difficult experience in their lives. They adapted, they adjusted, they did what they thought was best to get them through that experience. So if you really want to heal it, you need to save them from it. So heal their pain first. And oftentimes it will absolutely automatically dissipate from your energy without any extra healing. It'll dissipate from your life entirely, uh, which is awesome. Then once we've done that, we need to heal the negative energy from you. So once we've healed it from the ancestor, we heal it from you. Uh, and this is what changes your point of attraction. So the experiences that you're drawing into your life that are uh, really drawn in by the genetic wounding. So you can imagine how negative those experiences could be. You need to um, heal your ancestors first and then it releases effortlessly. It's really easy to change your point of attraction then because there's no trauma there to hold it in place. It makes a big, big difference, which is fantastic. Um, and finally, we can't just have your system having gaps because we've taken all this stuff out and all this information out, uh, wherever there was information. Instead, we're going to replace it with an energetic blueprint that teaches your system how to function in a healthy, 
positive way and pretty much hey presto that's us sorted we've, we've done it and we've managed uh, and an awesome side benefit of that is that it changes the energetic genetics for you and you onwards so anyone of, ahead of you that would be in your family line as well any children or grandchildren that you have and any future children or generations of them as it moves down through so you really are healing a family template for like an insane amount of time it's absolutely amazing it's so incredible um but i sure you i'm sure you'll be wondering well how do we do this three-step process it must seem a bit odd it's really simple it's quick and it's easy uh, we use energy healing to send healing to your ancestors on both sides so again that's the important thing you need to go down the the uh, father route and the mother route because there's a lot of information on each side and of course it could be conflicting as well you need to heal on both sides to release uh, then we need to release the negative energy from your cells uh, and therefore your life of course changing your point of attraction and then we replace the energy with a much healthier energetic genetic blueprint so really changing your point of attraction and changing it for all future family members as well and using the energy healing in this way it means that you're not only healing your own energetic genetics and all the disruption that it's causing in your life and awakening but you can calm your awakening you can finally smooth out the chaos that it can bring uh, and get relief and then you can you can send healing to everyone else uh, through history as well and everyone through the future as, as well it's absolutely amazing what you can do with genetic healing it really really is so please uh, submit your questions and i'll answer them but i'm going to uh, be doing some readings now so if you would like a reading please just give us a little comment below and I will start selecting someone. So you can just say, please uh, give me a reading, please, or me, please, <laughs> something like that will be fine. And we'll take a little look through uh, and I'll be selecting someone in just a little moment. So I can see uh, Maria says, this all makes so much sense. I've always felt like I didn't belong in my family. I've always thought and acted differently than them. Yeah, you're, you're a light worker definitely and, and you incarnate into these families to clear. Uh, so we've got Moana says, hi Kelly, thank you so much for that powerful genetic healing. I really experienced so much during that energy healing. So Moana was with us in the uh, the energy healing that we're, we've got going along with this and I'll have a link in the description if you want to join that afterwards. Uh, she said, I really experienced so much during that energy healing. I've been feeling very drawn, like there's a call of urgency for me to learn about my Hawaiian culture. So this sounds like your, um, your history is starting to come forward. It's looking for healing. She says, to know the history, to educate myself of my culture in every aspect. It's very strong and it's been happening for the past month or so. Um, is this healing that needs done? I would say definitely. She says, I've been trying to tune into the message, but I keep getting the words research and learn. Well, do that. Follow what your, your inner guide is telling you. Absolutely. You have to trust what it's telling you and you'll get the messages you're looking for. Right. So let's get into some of these readings. So everyone's letting me know who would like a reading. I'm just going to go... The guides will pull me to the right person. So actually, I'm going for a, a Kelly to a Kelly. So we'll get Kelly. Uh, I'll do a reading for you, Kelly. Kelly McGee, just to make sure I'm getting uh, names correctly. Okay, Kelly. So I'm just going to tune in to you. Uh, you can just relax. And we'll just see what your family genetic wound is. Okay. Okay, Kelly, you've got healing history in your genetics. I can see that you've got an ancestor. This would be a really long time ago. And they were doing some form of healing or maybe even, you know, working with herbs, like a kind of holistic healer, working with plant medicine, something along those lines. And what I'm being shown, the wound is, and some of this is going to be intense, guys. I'm just going to tell you what's coming up. But they've, they've been harmed as a result of their gift. And I think we're getting into kind of like witch trials but it's earlier than that and what I'm being shown is that they were burned and they were branded as a result of that and what I'm feeling is there's a there's big themes around shame there's big themes around shame really really debilitating and that's where it all comes from there's uh there's also big issues in uh, finding a meaningful career finding meaningful work and there's avoidance of that that's the pattern that's come in I feel is that because your ancestor sustained such trauma which is still carried there. There's a lot of, I'm seeing that they burned their arms. Awful, absolutely awful. They burned their arms. Um, 
and branded them and there was a lot of shame in that and it's putting a block in the way of you finding fulfilling careers and fulfilling work within your family line because there's a sense that if you enjoy it and if it's fulfilling if it's to do with gifts or abilities even your creativity um, you're going to be harmed for it that's the program that's in place so there's some healing that really needs done there Kelly to free you up and and bring all those skills and gifts and abilities to the forefront in a way that that your spirit feels it can handle because there's an avoidance there so let's have a look and see who else is we're getting called to let's see Anne so Anne Murdoch I feel that we need a reading for you Anne so just relax again I'm going to tune into you and see what we've got going on here Gosh, we've got another kind of punishment theme here. I'm seeing ancestors for you and there's a wound around religion. So I'm getting a sense that you had an ancestor that was, you know, I'm not sure exactly what it was, what specific religion it was, but they were uh, committed to a specific religion and it was really intense and they've picked up a lot of shame programming. There's a lot of, uh, there's fear of doing anything wrong. I think that they were maybe punished for everything they got wrong. A similar thing, I'm seeing them getting belted across the fingers and across the hands. Um, sometimes even being, uh, you know, a belt being used on their back, on the side of the head, you know, everything they did, they got beaten for doing something wrong. And it's created this fear uh, in your family template of getting anything wrong. It, it creates such an intense anxiety around making mistakes, taking a chance, trying something for the first time because there's a sense that you'll get it wrong. And it's what I'm being shown is it's keeping you out of your power. It's very much keeping you out of your power in this family line because you never really are able to step into that taking full responsibility for yourself because there's this sense that someone's going to come along and reprimand you. That's the energy that's going on there. And so, of course, anyone, if anything that I say resonates, please do let us know below. Uh, let's see who else we've got. Marianne. Marianne, let's do a reading for you. Let's see, Marianne. What's going on in your family line? What's your genetic wound? Okay. So I'm picking up on uh, a lot of nature and maybe even some farming quite far back in your family history and I'm seeing that you had ancestors where it was really peaceful they just were able to get on with the work farm the land um, and they would have been happy people and then let's see exactly what's happened okay something's changed some sort of system came in or something changed not entirely being shown what it was uh, but in the society and it ended up they starved they, they had this huge farm they were able to farm the land they had all the re these resources and somehow they ended up uh, starving they literally had nothing and it's created a real poverty programming in your energetic uh, genetics I can see that there are issues around money it's actually manifested more as money than it has with food I think in your family there is issues about going hungry and not having what you need, but it's created this survival, real survival trauma in the system. It feels like you're never really going to be able to relax or to calm down because genetically your system thinks that there's not going to be enough and you're going to starve to death. Uh, and this is a really sad story because there was more than just adults there. It was a, it was a family. Uh, so something really awful has happened there. Um... And that's been imprinted. That's been imprinted and it's been sent down. So just be mindful of that showing up because that's something that's really going to need cleared for you. And it's also about bringing abundance back into your life. If you can clear that, you're going to really open the, the doors for abundance to come back into your life and your space. Let's see. Okay, Pamela. Pamela Wakefield. I'll do a reading for you next, Pamela. Let's see, we'll just do a few more and then we'll get wrapped up for today. Uh, but Pamela, let's see what's in your family history. 
Okay. Oh, we've got life purpose stuff in the family causing problems. I'm picking up that you had an ancestor in your past that was really quite ambitious. Quite ambitious and I'm seeing that they were uh, sailing on big ships. So I think this is someone who chose to go to a new frontier, chose to take a chance and explore, chose to do something kind of out of the box and really, really different and went with a real sense of purpose and excitement and optimism and it feels like something something terrible's happened I'm not sure exactly if they never made it to where they were going or the ship went down something went wrong and as a result the the programming in your family line is very much around don't follow your dreams it's dangerous to follow your dreams it's dangerous to feel joyful or optimistic or happy about something because it's all going to fall apart it's going to be dangerous or it's not going to work out and it's that disappointment of of your dreams being dashed and your hopes and desires being crushed is an energy that's been sent down and uh, I feel like it's it's causing big limitations you want to clear that and really move into a healthier happier energy because uh yeah, it feels like it's really putting blocks in the way. So you might find that obstacles come up quite a lot when you try to do new things. And I feel like that's what it is. It's this protection mechanism coming in from the soul blueprint and the energy blueprint to protect you. It's like if we put an obstacle there and an obstacle there and an obstacle there, she won't be able to step out and do this thing that's going to be so dangerous. That's definitely what's coming up. Let's see. Okay, just one or two more, guys. And we'll see... See what I'm being drawn to. Okay, let's see Concetta. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Concetta, let's do a little reading for you. So tuning into your energy now. And let's see exactly what we're picking up on. Oh, a lot of family conflict. Okay, I'm being shown something along the lines of uh, you've got ancient ancestors who were some form of farmer. I don't know if they're working with fruit or like, I don't know what it would be, like olives or something. They were doing farming something where they're picking off the trees and they're working on this land and it's just all arguments. It's all... Uh, fights, it's all bickering, nobody can agree and I think there may have been a, like three brothers that worked on all this, there was like three families, something like that and in amongst these families it's just chaos, everyone's arguing, arguing. nobody can agree um, and again there's, there's this energy about success, it's like, it's kind of like the arguing came in, hold on there's some energy shifting right now for you Oh, that's right. This is what it is. I started getting ringing in my ears and I'm like, what's, what is this? It's affected your ability to listen. So what's happened is all this arguing and all this <clears throat> and speaking as well. You can hear my throat going. Um, it's affected your ability to communicate in, in that family genetic template. So that's the issue that's coming up. It's communication. And it is about maybe not being able to communicate correctly in the first place. But it's also like a lot of the resentment that is in the family line from those particular family members who couldn't get along has been passed down and it means that it kind of um, causes issues with speaking your truth, being understood. It feels like there's a lot of being misunderstood. It just plays out and out and out. Uh, a lot of confusion and a lot of bickering and arguing. So you'd want to get that cleared so that you can really express yourself clearly so that people understand you and so that you're getting out of that energy of people kind of pushing other people away trying to reject each other and things like that we want to definitely clear that so let's see I think we'll just do one more and see what else we can get Oh, 
Okay. I'm just seeing my guide's always lead me to the the right person, so I'm just seeing what we can find here. Let's go with Sabina. Sabina, let's do a reading for you. Uh, let's just tune into you and we'll see what's going on there. Okay, so there's themes of neglect in your family history. And I'm seeing an ancestor who... Now, I brought this up earlier in someone else's reading. It's not really about food, but I'm seeing an ancestor that's been so neglected. They've been, you know, really emaciated, really, really starved. But the image that I'm being shown is not just about being starved of food or nourishment of things that you need. It's about being starved of affection, starved of comfort, starved of care. Um, and this person really has been neglected in a way that they've just really not had anything that they've needed. And I feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot of mistrust in other people as a result of that. There's the, the, the abuse that this person has sustained has kind of imprinted the genetic template with a standard mistrust of everyone else. It makes you suspicious of others and what their motives uh, might be. Let's just see what else we can get there. There's a lot of emotion there. There's a lot of pain. Um, I feel that soul really needs some some healing and some powerful indeed. Um, fantastic, guys. So I think that's us for the readings just now. Um, let's... Oh, okay. Sorry, I've just spotted another one. I can see that Jen says, Unfortunately, my sister was murdered July 20th 2020 my family's a lot of pain in it for generations i would really with all my heart please get a reading please yes certainly you can we'll do this as the last one jen i'm so sorry to hear of the pain in your family um certainly that alone would be enough reason to get some some genetic healing going uh so let's have a little tune in to you and we'll see what we can find in your family history Okay, there's an ancestor in your family history that's shell-shocked. And I, I don't necessarily mean shell-shocked to do with uh, being around bombing, but you know that level of shock when you can't really function, you're kind of catatonic, you can't really respond? There's there's an ancestor in your family line that sustained that type of uh, kind of shock and trauma. And what I feel it's passed down is this kind of there's an aspect in the mind that just kind of sometimes just shuts off. So if you find sometimes that you have moments where things are blocked out, where you get a bit confused, you know, maybe you get all jumbled up all the time or you suddenly have moments where you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, I, you know, I'm confused. Or walking in a room and you can't remember what you're doing. It's that type of energy. It's that kind of uh, forgetfulness and kind of like when your brain does a blank. And it's actually to do with this ancestor with the shell-shocked energy that's been passed down throughout the line. And that state that they're in where they can't really respond and can't do anything, you're getting a tiny bit of that when your brain uh, short circuits like that. And of course, I don't mean physically the brain, we mean energetically. Um, it's just creating this energy that kind of stops you in your tracks and makes you, it's like short-circuiting a little bit where you're like, oh, what was I doing? I can't remember. It's that kind of energy. I'm not being shown exactly what happened to this ancestor to put them in this state. Um, I think they may have been living somewhere where a real uh, trauma has occurred for the entire society. Something really bad's happened. I don't think it's war, but something's happened. Um, so definitely that ancestor's needing some healing to release that and to free you and other members of your family from that. And I would also just like to send you uh, lots of compassion and I'm sure that loads of other people watching the video are as well our thoughts are with you and I'm so sorry you're having such a difficult time I hope that that helps so okay guys so that's us done for today we've done lots of readings um, 
There we go. So we've had lots of uh, lots of feedback. Um, let's see. I'm doing lots of different things just now. <clears throat> So we've got lots of thanks and yes, 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 thank you very much. Um, let's see, fantastic. I can see a lot of people are sending kind thoughts as well to Jen, which is really lovely. Thank you for sending your support, we appreciate that. Uh, fantastic guys, so we're going to do a little recap of everything that we learned today so that you've got a really good understanding of all of it. So any questions that you have about genetic wound healing, you can let me know. So to recap what we've learned, we've learned that your genetic wounds have been activated. This raise in vibrations globally has activated your genetic wounds, which means all your family's baggage is coming to the surface and playing out in your real life, causing drama and disruption. We've learned that genetic wounds are the number one cause of life disruption during awakening and uh, it dictates what you draw into your life, what you're able to attract into your field and into your life experience. We learned that if you don't actively heal and clear them, they'll play out in your life in awakening, uh, seeking to be resolved, which could take years. Don't do it that way. It's really difficult. It could take years, um, but we can do it more quickly. We learned three big mistakes to avoid when you're healing your energetic genetics. No genetic healing at all, uh, healing the wrong person and not healing your ancestors first. We also learned three simple steps to powerful genetic wound healing, which were heal your ancestors, release their trauma first, always the most important thing, release the negative energy from your system and from your energetic cells, and step three, replace with a healthy energetic blueprint. Uh, the good news is you don't need to go to energy healers, you don't need to go and train, you don't need expensive repeated sessions to work through all your different ancestors. If you're ready to get started on genetic energetic healing, then you can check out our brand new energy healing meditation, the genetic wound healing. I'm absolutely so excited about this. Uh, it'll help you to heal your genetic wounds, to free yourself from negative family traits and patterns and calm life chaos for an easier awakening. We can get started in about 10 minutes time. Uh, you won't find a healing product like this anywhere else. Energy healing is absolutely the key to clearing this stuff. So you can use our step by step. And of course, you could use any other route, but it's just important that they cover those three important steps. Um, but energy healing is the route. And our meditations are a special hybrid of meditation and energy healing and activations. So um, it's the equivalent of specifically tailored energy healing session with me because I work with high vibrational spirit guides who are dedicated to helping us on the awakening pathway. Um, and they especially, especially tailor it to your energy. Plus, you can use it over and over and over again to continue working through all those layers of genetic issues from the comfort of your own home and at your own pace. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about it and then we'll get ready to finish up. So this meditation will clear false negative beliefs about life that get passed down energetically uh, and genetically that are holding you back in your life. They'll free you from energetically carrying and passing on your family's emotional baggage. It's going to cancel any obligations to be like your mother or father. It's going to release trauma still carried in the energy and passed down energetically in your cells. It's going to send healing to all of your ancestors to both on both your mother and father's sides uh, and help you absorb the wisdom gained from your collective ancestors' experiences and all their learning. So you get to pull all the learning and the wisdom and leave all the pain behind. And I'll put a link in the description below. But the key to doing this, the absolute key is using energy healing. There's nothing I've found that can do energetic, sorry, genetic wound healing in that way. Um, and like I say, you can follow the three steps. You can do it with anything else if you want. I'm just trying to make it as easy as I can for you with a resource that means literally you can put it on, you can do your 20 minutes and you're getting through the healing. And more than that, you can repeat it as many times as you want. So you don't need to keep going back to uh, other therapists, you don't need to keep doing expensive uh, treatments or sessions, you just play it anytime that you want, anytime that stuff shows up in your life, you can just play it and start to move through this stuff, that's the key, energy healing is the key uh, and that's the thing that's going to work on these energetic genetics, to change the template, to change your point of attraction, it is very very powerful uh, and just uh, you can tell how passionate I am about it, it's just so cool, it really is so cool. So. Do let me know if you guys have any questions. I think that's us. Uh, I think that's us sorted. So I saw a few people. A few people are asking how to clear. Uh, like I said before, 
you'll be able to rewind the video as well there's tons of information but it's energy healing you want to use uh, like I say you could use any form you could visit different people if you wanted you don't need to um, but you want to work through those three points that I mentioned earlier you'll be able to rewind the video but most important thing is that they work on the ancestors first so that's why our uh, genetic wound healing meditation makes it really easy for you because you just need to listen and the guides will do all the energetic healing for you as many times as you like and whenever that stuff starts to rise up in life it makes it really easy because it can be a little bit complicated uh, so Let's see, so we've got a lot of thank yous. Uh, you're all very welcome. Uh, I can see DC is asking, do you do personal sessions? Not at the moment, I'm not doing any sessions, unfortunately. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, just lots of thank yous. DC says, how do we order this genetic wound healing? You'll find the link in the description box below. You can just click on it and it'll give you all the information and you can just see if it feels like a fit for you, if it resonates with you. Uh, let's see, Pamela says, do you need to know the origin or person though to use the clearing meditation? Not at all. So this is the point with this. You're not going to know who that person is, what their wound specifically is. You don't need to know any of that information. It's not like you need to do some form of regressive experience. You just put the meditation on and the guides are the ones who are sifting through your family history, looking for the right ancestor and, and basically putting all the healing and downloads into them. So it's a little bit different from the normal ones in that you are getting a healing like you would usually do, but a lot of the healing is also focused on the ancestor where it began. And of course, the power of that, when you heal the ancestor who sustained the original trauma, everything else in between you and them, every other ancestor gets a healing as well. Incredible power, absolutely incredible. Um, so I think that's us done for today. If you have any other questions, guys, you can uh, put them in the comments box and I will answer them uh, at a later date. And I think that is us. So the link is in the description. Uh, description. Check it out and see if it feels like a fit for you. And thank you so much for joining us, guys, today. I hope that you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye-bye.